the cyber security enthusiast who works in the company I cannot name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's begin. All right, uh, welcome to this introduction workshop to GNS3. So for those who don't know what GNS3 is, GNS3 is actually a... Initially, it was created as a network simulator. Uh, the person who created this basically created GNS3 so that he can learn Cisco routing and pass his CCNA. <laughs> Literally, that was what was the whole purpose of it. Okay, but um, so what you're looking at is actually GNS3 itself. So GNS3 has technically two components. Uh, you can, there is the front end which you're looking at, and then there is the server itself. Uh, you can run GNS3, if, let's go to its website. So it is a piece of software, which if you go to downloads, all right, please don't auto-download now. So it's currently running at version 2.2.0. Uh, I'm demoing the immediate version before this, which is 2.1.21. All right, so as you can see, if you click download, if it's on Windows, you'll get basically the UI and then it'll tell you to go and download the VM. Uh, the reason is because if you run it without VMware or without VirtualBox, it actually runs KVM to run its appliances. So that's why it needs a VM. So the VM is actually based on Ubuntu 16.04, which is what I'm using. So version 2.2.0 is based on 18.04. So if you're going to go and install it at home, please install 2.20. So let's go through the interface. So why do this? A lot of people, even at work, when I show them this, or I'm about to show them this, I did show a few people. The question is, why, why need this? We have ESXi, we can run our own virtual machines. We can do networking on ESXi, no problem. So the problem is, if you're not very familiar with ESXi, anybody here work with ESXi? VMware, ESXi, yeah, right? Have you seen the new interface, the web only interface? It's horrendous, right? Uh, yeah, I know. I feel you, brother, yes. <laughs> okay, so last time the interface was very, very nice. No, you can do this, you can create. You can create virtual switches very easily. You can do port groups very easily. It's all there laid out. The new UI is like, uh, okay, but the whole reason for this is because it is very visual. Uh, this is very useful if like, let's say you're doing a proof of concept and then you are, or you're learning and you want to know whether you hook up the appliances correctly. You can visually see that yes, it's hooked up correctly or not, all right? So this is the interface. So there's different section. This is your canvas. When you create a project, you'll get this. It's blank currently. This is your console. If a lot of things comes out in the console, then uh, yeah, that's not good. This is your server. Server, you can see local server, which is what GNS3 internally will run, if locally. It will also show you the virtual machine, or it will show you remote servers. So in my case, I prefer to run everything remotely, so I'm actually connected to a VPN back home and connected to my GNS3 server. So this is actually my GNS3 server running at home. Okay, on the left is all your appliances. From top to bottom, you can see their types routers, you got switches, you got end devices. Okay, end devices is usually your PCs, your Docker containers, all right? This is your security devices, all right? And then you can see all. The last one is called add a link. So this is what is most powerful about GNS3. It allows you to visually link all these appliances together. But before you can begin, so let's take a look here, install appliances, there's a lot of them. By default, the only thing that you get is the switch, the cloud, which is basically your net cloud, which allows you to connect your appliances to the internet. A Ethernet hub, a Ethernet switch, a frame relay switch, a net cloud. <coughs> Sorry, this is the one that allows you to get netted. I'll explain what cloud is later on. And a VPCS, which is like a very simple core OS kind of machine that is terminal only, only used for you to test for networking. You might understand that initially this is designed by the guy 
for testing Cisco switches, right? For him to sit for his exam. So let's go to preferences. So the main power actually comes from here. So let's take a look. So enable local server means if let's say you're running on Linux, all right, and you install GNS3, the full shebang as a server itself, you actually don't need an external server. You can run it as yourself. You can run a remote server. Okay, but as you can see, my okay, or you can connect to a GNS3 server as a VM. All right, so if you take a look, it tells you to download the VM. All right, so you can run as a VMware workstation or VirtualBox. So in my case, I'm running everything remotely. Okay. So all your general purposes, VNC, if you prefer to use VNC, you can use Spice if you prefer to use Spice over, instead of VNC. All right. So these are your built-in stuff, like your hub, switches. You can create templates. So everything is based on an idea of a template machine. All right. So if you are familiar with the concept of golden images, right, if you've done virtualization, or if you work with IT support, you're familiar with the term golden image. It's like the best known state of a certain operating system or best known state of a machine, which you can replicate across. So you can create custom hubs. So by default, the standard hub they give you is eight port. So you can create like, let's create a new one. So you can create like six port or whatever, right? <coughs> what we will be usually using is the Kimu VMs, okay? So as you can see, I have a PFSense virtual machine currently created, all right? Where is it? It's currently in my main server, all right? So let's walk through and let's create a Ubuntu server. So first things first, we're gonna go new. Okay, there's two ways actually. You can do template or you can do it manually like how I'm doing. I prefer to do it manually. So let's call it Ubuntu server. Okay, next. With 64 bit, yes. How much RAM? How much RAM does a Ubuntu server need realistically? One Mac, one gig enough? Yeah, let's just give it one gig. Okay, this is your template. Remember, when you actually deploy the thing, you can actually configure the machine on the fly. So you click next. So I'm going to use Spice. I just don't like VNC. I don't know why. Okay, so it's going to connect back to my server. <clears throat> and ask, okay, cool, I need an image. What images do you have? So by right, you should have already created a hard disk image, but this is like the cheat code way of doing things. Huh? What normally we will do, a lot of people do anyway, they will move the ISO over into the server, and then they'll connect to it. Uh, please tell me my VPN didn't die. Yay, my VPN died. Well then. Excellent. Yay, I forgot to do a sacrifice uh, for demo gods. Uh, bugger. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope, cancel. Nope. No. 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 Come on, let me close you. Okay. <laughs> really now. Okay, let me explain what's going on actually. If you see, it's connected to the main server, but because there is a latency lag. So as far as it's concerned, the server is not answering. So to solve this, so you close it, and then you launch it again, and pray hard that it works. <laughs> Project library. Nope, it's not connected to my server. Did my VPN just die? No, it's not. No. Okay, end of workshop, let's go home. <laughs> because if I can't connect to my server, <gasps> is it because the door was closed now? I think so. Yeah, signal's quite bad. Yeah, I think it is the door. Can someone open the door? <laughs> I have no signal. Wait, does the free Wi-Fi allow VPN connections? No, I thought so. 
bugger. I'm sure we can fix that. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me disconnect. Why would I put a key logger on my own computer? Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. Sure, Mike, sure. Oh, shit, really? Uh? Okay. Please connect. Hey, I'm connected. Oh. No, you can't refresh. Doesn't work that way. Bitwise. Connecto. Ha, your life. Toot. Ding, 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 ding. Any more quizzes now? Any more quizzes now? <laughs> Got a vending machine, I can get prizes. <laughs> what happened? Why do I not have a server? And it's not even attempting to connect to the server. Oh, yeah, I think it is latency. I must resend my high praises for tippling. No, no, don't start local. Hmm? No, uh, this is, all the files are there. Anybody has a landline I can jack into? Because this is very irritating. Okay, I suspect it's my tp -Lang. Yeah, who has a very, very expensive phone? Because usually the more expensive your phone, the more powerful the connection, right? <clears throat> Anybody has an iPhone 11 Pro here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the network will be like perfect. Oh no, it's like a life. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What's it called? That is a bloody long password. <laughs> And this is English. <coughs> I think so. No. Knowing my fat finger, I probably typed it wrongly. <gasps> Maybe I shouldn't have eaten too much during the break. Maybe this is punishment for it. Right? Connect, 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 connect. Oh, I am brilliant. Yay! So for you, any of you wondering, right? Uh, this is basically me at work early in the morning. <laughs> wondering why I'm not connected to my service at home. Okay, let's reopen this. Yay. Okay, where was I? Ubuntu server, yes. Yes. Maybe Ubuntu hates me, that's why. So create a new one. Ubuntu. Next. Maybe it wasn't happy with 1024. Let's give it a bit more. 208. Next. Spice. Next. Oh, yes. Okay, so here's the trick that we like to use. 
we will go and click onto the ISO instead of the hard disk image. I'll click finish, go to edit, go to hard disk, copy, put it here. Because if not, if it's much faster to move things through FTP or whatever other means to the server than through this interface. Because if you had selected from here, browse and copy an ISO, it'll take a very, very long time to go and copy it. So now what we do, we're going to kill this, we'll create, click how to, no worries, metadata, actually it doesn't really matter actually, off, next. Uh, okay, so for those not familiar with how Kimi or KVM works, this is basically, if you're familiar with provisioning, thin provisioning or fat provisioning of hard disk, virtual disk, this is where you set it. So off means thin provisioning. Metadata is that you set all the sizing and metadata within the provision itself. Uh, this makes use of the system itself to do the thing. All right, as you can see. And then full is like, yeah, let's specify the full size, block it out and fill it out with zeros. Okay. Next, finish, fantastic. I have one network adapter, okay. So now we have a template, click apply. Okay, and pray hard this goes to 100%. Yes, fantastic. <coughs> this is a simple network which I already created beforehand. So let's now, hello, where do you go? Yoo-hoo, oh, bugger. Where do you? Yes. Okay, so now if you go here, You'll see Ubuntu. Why did I say Ubuntu and not server? So you can drag it here. So now what it does is that it works within a project form. So inside of this project folder, it will take a look at the master template and create a copy of that master template and then bring it over into this project. Okay? So if you go right click, okay, and then you do this is this. Configure. You'll see exactly the same as what we've configured earlier. All right, exactly the same. So this is the interesting thing. You click here, you see, it automatically will create a virtual ethernet cable, which allows you to connect to any port. And immediately, this machine, if I boot it up, is able to get to the internet, all right? Because it's connected to this switch, which is connected to this firewall router, which is connected to the net, which connects to my home router, which then goes out to the internet. Yay. All right? So let's try. Don't crash. <laughs> Please. OK? OK? Yeah, we see the latency. I already clicked Start, so it should have started. Yeah. So if you open a console, And you can see it's now running. Okay, so that is creating a virtual machine. All right. So one of the nice things about it is that it also supports Docker. Because when you install the GNS3 server, it installs Docker as well. Okay. Uh, let's ignore this installation. So if you take a look at this Kali CLI one, okay? This is actually a Docker image. So is this. So how do you add a Docker image? There's two ways you can add a Docker image. So go edit, you go preference. You can see there's Docker containers. So currently, I have the following Docker templates installed. One way is that you can go new, okay? New image. And then you literally go and go to Docker Hub and put it in. Another way is to use appliances. So if you go to GNS3's website, they have a marketplace for appliances. Okay? So if you take a look, they have appliances or templates for appliances for most things. Right? You got Juniper, you got Ubuntu, and Top NG. Alright. So these are all the templates. Right? Firefox. 
Okay, it's basically a very small container that has Firefox running inside of it. Okay, free BSD, OpenSUSE. Okay, Windows Server. Okay, here's something interesting about the Windows Server. These templates can fall into two, two generations. One is if it's a Docker template or if it's a Kimu template. So a Kimu template, when you install it, so let's go and download this, even though I already have a Windows Server installed. If you take a look at it, oh, oh Windows Server has a problem. Let's go directly to the GNS tree. Yeah. Okay. So if you take a look at the template, you'll see things like this. Is declaration. So you'll see that it actually requires an ISO or it requires a VHD. So even though it has templates, right, it expects that you have already went out and sourced all these files. Or within the template itself, it will give you the link to where to find some of this. But for some of these items, there is no way you can get the images. Because unless you have a service level agreement with the companies, they will not release the images to you. There's no way you're going to get Cisco images. There are no way you're going to get the FortiGate images. All right? Windows, there's a way around it, which I'm going to show you later. I'm going to actually install a Windows Server inside and show you. All right? So you must be wary when you download all these files. So .gns3a is actually the appliance template. Okay? Yes, close. So let's take a look at our Ubuntu. So as you can see, you can just install it as per normal. Then, uh, then, no, no. Continue without updating, I don't care. And then just install. Okay, then continue, yes. Uh, LOL, <laughs> LOL server, LOL user. Lol, lol, lol. Oh, no, no, no. That's a very bad password. Um, password. Okay. Done. So because it's running Spice, I don't need an SSH. But there are certain interesting things about this. For example, let's talk about Windows. Let's create a Windows machine. Don't worry, the method I'm showing you is a legitimate method of creating a Windows machine. You are not going to do any trouble. I think not. Lah. <laughs> okay, so Windows Server. Next. So if you go to Windows, Microsoft Windows Server's website, you can actually do evaluation of the servers. So the evaluation of the server lasts for 180 days. After 180 days, you can actually reset it five more times, which in effect gives you a free Windows Server for three years, which by that time, the new Windows Server will come out, <laughs> which you then download, lah, and then you migrate. Okay. Please don't do that. This is only for testing. Please don't do this in development. Lah. It's not for production, lah, this network. Okay. 2048. Next. Spice. Next. So, so this is a Windows 10 evaluation machine. Let's install Windows 7 because there's a problem with Windows, Windows Server or in fact Windows that you need to be aware of, which is going to be interesting. So let's install 2016 data center. So now we have a template for it. Fantastic. Edit. Same thing. Copy the ISO, move it over to the CD. Hard disk, browse, sorry, sorry, no browse. Create, a new one, doesn't really matter which version. Next, yeah, right, 30 gigs, sure, 64. Finish, all right. Now you need to load something else, okay? And that is, you need to add IDE and go. Oh, bugger. That doesn't work, does it? Okay, never mind. Later, I'll show you the trick. 
Okay, about Windows, right? Because it's running Kimu on the back end, you need to actually go and download the vet IO. Ah, it's here, yes. Let me, let me show you. So if you go to slash opt, GNS3, go to images, Kimu. So there's a vet IO, which is actually required if you've done Windows. Because if you install a Windows virtual machine and you don't install the vet IO KVM drivers for network, uh, hard disk, and for some ancillary devices, you will have a lot of problem. Number one, which I totally forgot about, is that your Windows machine will refuse to talk to the NTP server. I don't know why. And the whole week I was wondering why my clocks doesn't sync, even though I can ping the NTP server. Okay, it's actually something to do with the network card. Hard disk, because if you don't install it, you won't be able to see your full hard disk. And some ancillary devices, because it's just Windows. What do you want from me? Okay, so please remember to install this. All right, so you actually install it here. An ISO or a floppy drive. I should have installed the VHD, which is for the floppy drive. Then just declare it as a floppy drive and just connect it to here. All right, so that's how you do Windows machine. Okay, cool. Yes. Right, let's talk about cloud, or to be precise, how to connect this sandbox or this project to the internet. Wait, how much time do I have? Oh, I don't have much time left. Okay, so there are two clouds you hear, cloud and net, okay? A net cloud, is basically how normal VMware works or how VirtualBox work, all right? So you create a virtual machine, it gets to the internet through the VM net because your machine is acting as its gateway, right? It have its own internal IP address. A cloud is a custom network. If you go to configuration, so right now, my GNS3 server only has one network card, all right? So I cannot assign and bridge that network card, okay? But if, let's say you, have, you can assign multiple uh, network card to it, and then you set it to bridge, okay? If you set it to bridge, when you set it up, you set it to bridge, it will come out here, and you are able to connect your machine to this cloud and you'll be bridged to your physical network. So you'll get its IP address directly from your home physical router. So in how, how I would use that is if you have multiple projects, right? You can have jump boxes inside of each project and only allow that jump box to be available for connection from the live host. All right, so from your computer, you just want to do some checking, and you don't want to turn on everything, you just go into the jump box directly. Or another way is, if let's say you're like me, you're a security researcher, you're doing a lot of simulation inside, so you're like creating packages and stuff, and then you have a collector, a SIM, right, like Splunk or ELK, what, what have you. You can have a second nick on that ELK machine, and connect it to a cloud so that my computer, the live, the, my normal desktop, can then connect to that ELK dashboard. You get what I mean? All right? Cool. So, yes. What other things can we do with this? Let's take a look. Has Ubuntu installed yet? No. Why? Because it's Ubuntu. This is project based. So here's something that you must be aware of. You cannot close a current project. There's no such thing as save a project. Because a project is assuming that you're running this simulation at that point of time. But you can do certain things. Example, number one, file, 
project. You notice I have this check mark here. It says leave the project running. That is why when I turn on this GNS3 front end, all the machines were green. Because even though I closed the front end, right, all these machines in this project is still live. Okay? If I did not do that and I uncheck this, the moment I close this or I open another project, the whole project will just shut down. So this is something that you must be aware of. Okay? So to prove that that is true, I'm going to create a new project. Okay? Project two. Okay. So I'm now in a new project. Correct? Notice that there is nothing here because this project has no machines. But I can still see that there are other projects running in the background because the RAM and CPU is still being utilized. And that is how I know that there are other projects running. Okay? So if I were to go here, project library, you will see simple network, and I click on it, and I'm connected back to that live project. So this is useful, for example, if you are doing development work, okay, and you want to simulate the flow, like you have your Git repo here, you have your development here, your test machine here, then your final deployment server there. You can build it up, right? Have a custom cloud that allows you to connect into it to check in codes, and then you can just let it run on the background on a big server at home for you to play around and test and fine-tune your processes. And then when you're happy with it, deploy it at home. Okay? Another thing that is interesting is this. So if you have ever used Workstation Pro, VMware Work Workstation Pro, or SXI, you can do snapshots, correct? So here's the thing. You can actually, right, Go here, right click. Mm. You can actually export a particular machine or you can actually do this. You go edit, manage snapshots. So this is useful for if let's say you're learning networking or you are trying different things in your service and you want to try different things you can actually snapshot the entire thing. This is very useful if like, you have multiple servers and you want to test out different tunings on different servers. Right? So you can create snapshots of the entire project, which means the state of all the virtual machines, all the dockers at that point of time gets saved so that you can roll back or change to different versions of that project. So for example, let's say I create one. Let's call this test one. Okay. Sorry, close. Stop the project. Done. Edit, manage snapshot. Okay, create. Test one. Okay. And then you'll export. which I really shouldn't have done because it'll take a very long time. Oh dear. So what it does, right, is a project base. So within the folder, you'll create a snapshots folder and you'll replicate all the machines that's inside there into this snapshot. So, each, so when you load a snapshot, it will actually take it out and then put it back into root, into the root of that project. So then that becomes the machines that you'll be running. No such machine or device. What? Hmm. No. No. See, this is what happens when there's latency. Yes. <gasps> oh no, the door closed! <laughs> Why you all sabo me la? Okay. Okay, okay, this is the last point. Okay. Never mind. 
Okay, so we already covered how to create a virtual machine. You can use Docker. Uh, how to connect things visually. How to work with projects. What else? I've already covered about if you're doing Windows, you need to do VetIO. Oh, yes, Docker. Yes. Okay. Docker. I'm really sorry. I'm not very good at Docker. Okay. So I'll try to explain this as best as I can. So correct me if I'm wrong, but if this server runs Docker and I run a container, right, on top of this, like for example, these two containers, and let's say it requires certain things that might affect memory paging. It will actually take that value from the host, correct? Docker people, please don't leave me hanging. Yes, is that correct? Yeah. Correct, right? You have to declare it, right? So what happened was, there was this Docker container for ELK, which refused to start, okay? Because it was saying something about vet underscore memory. Basically, the Java, Java virtual machine memory was not enough. Okay? So, this will happen if you use the pre built GNS3 VM. My recommendation, if you're going to use this primary for Docker, is to spin your own GNS3 server. The documentation is there. So, basically, what you do is you, you start a Ubuntu server, Ubuntu 18.04 server, add its PPA, the GNS3 PPA, do the custom things like Java memory space, make it big, as big as you want, and all those kind of things that Docker requires, and then you install the GNS3 server components into that server. This is to make sure that you will not have any issues all right, when you are deploying your Docker appliances inside here. Another thing, as of the latest version, which is GNS3 version 2.2, they have started to support, not, not support, they now support Docker attachments. What's the correct term? The one where you do dash D and then you can add a folder to a Docker. It's attachment, right? Mounting, is it? Mounting, what's the term? Mount. Okay, you mount the folder. Okay, because... Here's the thing about the current version that I'm using, 2.1. If I were to shut down, okay, it's shut down, right? These two, these two Docker containers, they're shut down. There's no persistence. Zero persistence. So if I had created a text file inside of them, now that they're shut down, they're gone. So because they realized a lot of people was using GNS3 with Docker, they've added that functionality in version 2.2. All right? So, I think that's it for me, right? No? No. Still have time. I have 10 more minutes. What am I going to do with 10 more minutes? I've covered everything. Okay, do you want to know anything particular about Genesis? Any special gotchas that, if you're thinking of using it in your use case, anything? So, you, you know this is the canvas, this current items in the canvas. This is your server, this is all the items. You can draw shapes also, actually. <laughs> but. Mm. Yep. How do you get it? Oh, you create a, the same thing. You edit, preference, and then you create a key museum. It's a key museum. Oh, okay. So, PFSense, there is a template for it. You can download it, or you can create it manually. It's up to you. And then the same thing, you download the ISO, mount the ISO, then you're good to go. I have opened WRT inside as well. Yeah, you're creating templates of those appliances. So you can have, I have templates for checkpoint. I have templates for, okay, not at here, but at work, Juniper, Cisco, right? Those kind of things. So as long as you can get hold of the firmware for that firewall, for the appliance, you're good to go. Open, w, open WRT, you can do it. TP-Link even gives you a virtual machine for you to, yeah, just install yourself. Right, you just, if you go to TP-Link, downloads firmware, virtual machines, you can just download it. All right, so that's how you create this. Anything else? 
So I have one question I read out to you. Okay, does GNS3 support snapshot features with a free VMware player? Free VMware player? VMware player. No. Okay, so this is how the connection works. If you're not running KeyMu, KVM, so all your virtual machines is running within VMware. So you're linking up with a VMware player. All right. What is it? Oh, wait. Ah, that's a very good question because I keep forgetting to talk about this. You cannot use VMware player 15. You have to use VMware player 14. You want to know why? Because VMware player 15's VIX control driver has not been released. Has not been open source and has not been released. So GNS3 makes use of the VIX drivers to remotely control the VMware player. So if, so yeah, so you have to use 14 and you also cannot do snapshot. So, uh. oh, but you can do it for uh, VMware Pro. Workstation Pro, yes. The VX for VMware 14 Pro, yes, you can do snapshots. So you, your functionality for snapshot works. Anything else? No? All right. Any other questions? If not, thank you so much. And if you want, feel free to play with GNS3. All right, thank you so much.